Hi, this is your host Apil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFL Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again Cassius Ru, Vice President of Customer Experience at Sayus Technology. Cassius, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's uh, good to be here and it's, it's been a while. We definitely have uh, some catching up to do and uh, happy to be a part of this uh, show today. And today's focus is going to be on the importance of support for high availability. Before we jump into the thick and thin of the topic, let's just quickly talk about the importance of high availability in today's modern world. Yeah, that's a, a great starting point. Let's uh, start with that foundation. It's uh, key to understand uh, high availability before we can jump in and say that support for it is actually valid. So. When we talk about high availability, we're talking about making sure that mission critical systems, applications, and services are available for customers when they need it uh, for the business's purposes, really seeking to accomplish the goals and the mission of that business. Uh, without that availability, right, uh, without systems being up and applications being up and functional, responsive, without access to data, in the event of an, an outage, an unplanned outage, um, a data center disaster or natural disaster, all of those things that we've come to rely on, they, they disappear. So high availability and high availability best practices are those uh, practices, software, services, architecture, um, and infrastructure that lead to creating highly available, resilient systems uh, for mission critical applications and services. What are some of the you have seen a kind of pattern, some challenges which are associated with building high availability strategy, uh, building culture and getting best out of those tools that are available. So when you think about high availability um, applications, databases, uh, the data, a lot of the challenges uh, that you will face are start with, um, it really start with what your definition, what are your goals and requirements, right? So most of uh, customers think of four or four nines of availability and then uh, start looking at how do you architect a, a system for those particular goals. What are the applications that you need to have highly available? Uh, what are their interactions? Uh, how do clients connect to those systems? Then all the way through that architecture, planning it out. Some of the, the biggest challenges that I see are planning out the architecture according to best practices and then going through and implementing and, and understanding where uh, HA software is needed and then where you, your team may need to be augmented by high availability experts, so experts that provide support or services. And so um, a lot of that is, is where you, you can see customers that have challenges with implementing an HA strategy. You can look back and see, okay, it starts with how did they understand their own requirements and then what kind of architecture did they develop and did they go it alone uh, to try to do all of those pieces or did they consult some experts who have expertise in these areas for constructing highly available systems uh, for deploying high availability software to increase the application availability, database availability and handling the replication of data um, and data availability between servers and systems and data centers. And once again, sticking to the modern world, we also see a lot of cultural movement happening. Uh, the silos from old data center days are kind of collapsing, but we do talk about DevOps, DevSecOps, SREs, platform engineering. SRE side reliability is something that's considered to ensure the reliability. So when it comes to high reliability strategy, which teams our target, whose problem or whose responsibility is it within teams? You know, that's a that's a great question. And um, in our experience, we do see a lot of the the silos, right? Um, in fact, uh, just a recent recent customer issue that we can kind of use as an example of, of what you describe is whose responsibility is it? Um, it's actually the entire uh, business's responsibility for high availability. And I'll, I'll give you a great example. So we had a, a recent issue where the IT team um, had made some changes or for the storage team, it made some changes to storage. Uh, and then of course, not knowing that that storage change impacts the characteristics and performance of the database using that storage. Um, of course, then you have the database team and they're investigating 
the issues related to database performance and availability, and that also impacts the application team. So uh, you have all of those channel challenges within just your IT infrastructure, right? So each one of those teams has to really think beyond their silo to recognize that high availab availability impacts networking, compute resources, storage resources, your application, your database. And then I'd raise it up one more level and say, it's also the responsibilities of um, IT managers. Um, it's also the responsibility of uh, the business as a whole to make sure that those teams are staffed and that they are doing their best to make sure those silos don't exist, right? Um, and that's a big challenge, right? Um, you have an, a critical outage where it's actually the application team that reports the issue. And then uh, think about the delays that you incur when uh, we think in terms of it's, it's someone else's responsibility, not it's a responsibility across all of the teams. Uh, maybe your application team realizes that their application is down, they engage with the high availability vendor, but you're waiting on someone with permissions to actually reboot the server. You get in the cloud environment where uh, you have a team that may have permissions to uh, reboot the system, but they don't have permissions on the cloud infrastructure. Uh, you have a, a application team that can start and stop the application, but they don't know how to manage the database. So it really becomes a collective effort of the, uh, the entire organization seeking to make sure they are resilient. And as we talked about the challenges and the team, let's now talk about the importance of working with a player who has all the not only experience, but tools uh, to help these teams. Uh, so basically the importance of support. Let's talk about just support in general, the importance of support in general first, uh, kind of like we did with what, why, what's high availability and why does that matter? If we think about it in general in the world we live in, um, and, and you're well aware and your audience will be extremely aware, systems are complex now, right? There aren't any uh, simple systems, very few simple systems. And um, the complexity of systems is, is something that continues to increase, right? People are busy. It's not their primary job uh, to understand all the inner workings of every system, just like we, we mentioned before with silos. Silos develop because people say, my job is to focus on storage. Uh, so a, a lot of times users aren't necessarily the experts in a particular software package. They're doing that, they're using that software to accomplish another job. Um, we look at software in general and there are, the, there are numerous use cases for software, uh, numerous workflows to, to get from point A to point B. And then of course, it's software, it's hardware, it's it's people involved. So you're likely gonna run into issues or, or perhaps bugs, software errors, and, and need help around that. So just when you think about the general idea of why someone would want support, you multiply and magnify that need when you think of these are your business's most critical applications, databases, and data. And, and they are equally complex in a high availability environment. They, they touch multiple components within the infrastructure. Your IT team is always going to be busy. Um, I don't know if I've ever met an IT person who says, I've got plenty of time. I'm just, you know, just waiting on the next disaster. I have a lot of time on my hands to kill. Uh, people are busy. And if you start thinking about your high availability systems, uh, databases, and applications, you tend to have uh, DBAs, uh, you tend to have application experts, you tend to have storage experts or AWS certified architects. You very rarely find that you also have a high availability, you know, I'm, I'm an expert in this high availability software. Uh, you may have infrastructure experts, but people have other jobs and they have other things that they need to accomplish for the business, right? And, and then we think about use cases and workflows. Um, we see a lot of different customers use our software and the way they use it is always gonna, you know, sometimes will surprise you and there are always different ways they, they tend to use it um, or tend to integrate it into their environment and into their workflow. So having a team that understands 
the complexity of high availability systems that understands it's not your primary job to know all the ins and outs of the, the high availability software, um, a, a team that understands the complexities of architecting for best practices and then knows different use cases, scenarios, has uh, years upon years of seeing uh, use cases, seeing problems, seeing errors, and then having a team that's dedicated to helping you when you run into an issue. That's why support is so critical for something that is so important as high availability. When it comes to support, of course, support does not mean spoon feeding. Can you also talk about that even if there is, of course, provide like SIOs that can go and help team, how teams should prepare themselves so that they're better prepared, and no pun intended, for the support there. Right, right. So I like to think of that as, as offering people how to get the most out of your support, right? And, and there are a number of different ways, but um, for the purpose of kind of uh, making it easy, let's start with the four ends. I'd say uh, the first end is notes. Teams can prepare by keeping good notes and details uh, about the architecture. Uh, we like to call them run books. And so having a plan that lays out how, how systems are architected together, how they work, what are their versions, what applications are involved, what teams are involved, uh, having a run book that details uh, notes for when you need to do an activity. Uh, I, you'd be surprised how valuable it is to have just a an ordered list of steps to take when you're you're getting ready to do a plan maintenance and then how destructive it can be when that team doesn't have that plan right so something that's very critical you want to know what are the steps you're going to take to maintain that so i'd start with notes good notes good details the second thing to get the best or the most out of your support is notice this the second end is notice you want to give your support team as much notice about changes in your environment, uh, about maintenance plans. Uh, of course, in high availability, the reason you have the software is to, to handle the unplanned disasters, right? Uh, but you don't want to create a disaster simply by not giving the team enough notice. Uh, that notice helps those uh, support teams align with what are your plans, uh, they can check those plans, make sure that you have taken good notes, that you have a run book. Uh, they can talk to you about best practices. And so when you give your support team that advance notice, it helps them help you to be better prepared when you need to call in. Um, the third N, I'd say, is news. And, and this is kind of a weird one, uh, but I, I chose news because you want to share any news about your organization or about the environment with the support team. And then you want to follow their news about their software, about their product, about what they've learned, about their best practices, or even if they've published, um, if they've published webinars or uh, episodes like the one we're recording where they can learn more about the best practices and high availability. It's a fast-paced world we live in where things change a lot. So keeping your support organization aware of personnel changes uh, and keeping yourself aware of the industry. What are some new best practices? What are things that your support team has learned? What are the new products that they have released that you should be thinking about and taking advantage of. A lot of times um, we had a call earlier today where a customer was just not aware that there was a new release um, and they didn't realize all the benefits they could get in stability, performance, um, and just some new features that are available in that release. So third in is news. And then the, the fourth one I'd say, if you want to get the best out of any support organization is I, I chose no as the fourth one. It's a say no to skipping steps. The high availability is critical. Uh, you want to say no to taking shortcuts. You want to say no to not involving your support organization in advance um, as often as, as you can. Um, and definitely when you're getting ready to do some major uh, milestone or maintenance, those teams have a wealth of information about the, the space, about best practices, architecture, interrelated systems, overcoming challenges within silos, and architecting for best practices. Uh, so you want to use those. And then there are some other items uh, around um, getting the most out of support 
that just didn't fit into the four ends. And so we'll say things like, uh, you want to make sure that you respond timely to communication, whether that's assembling all of the rules and responsibilities for a call when you're in the middle of an unplanned outage, or if that's simply responding to a case that you've, you've entered. Um, keeping that lines of communication open and going, that really helps you get the most out of the team because when they're working on your issue, they're making you their, their highest focus and they want to get that customer satisfied. And one of the hardest things to do is have a customer go quiet for a period of weeks and then jump back into the conversation as if it were only a few minutes later. Um, so I'd say those are kind of the key points on how to get the most out of your support. As much as we like that, hey, the support will be optimum, but what if the support is not as good as a client may expect? Obviously, we all want to have um, we all want to have great customer experience whenever we contact a business, uh, and especially in high availability, you want to make sure that if you're in an unplanned outage or a planned outage, uh, you want to feel like you're getting the proper attention from your support organization. But we do realize we're all human, and sometimes someone has a bad day, um, or uh, perhaps you are not getting what you expect out of the organization. So one of the, the, the key things there. Uh, starts before you need support, which is making sure that you have selected a, a reputable high availability organization and that you understand um, what their uh, support agreements are. So you want to make sure that you're choosing someone that provides the level of support that meets your SLAs. You want to make sure that you fully understand what their support agreements are. Um, a, a common disconnect uh, that you can see around is if the support organization doesn't provide 24 by 7, but you have that expectation. So you want to know that going in before you choose it. Uh, the second thing you want to do uh, when you're choosing an HA uh, software uh, vendor is understand what are your, your levers for escalating when you don't feel like you're getting the proper level of support. And that could be to uh, a support director or a senior support member. Uh, you want to understand um, what the support is like after the sale, right? Do you still have access to the sales rep and you can talk to them? And, and then you want to do kind of a follow-up. You want to start with what would you like to see different? Um, it, it's very easy to, to drift into uh, blame and complaining, but if you really want, if you're not getting the best out of your support organization, you want to lead them towards a path that helps you and them see the way forward, right? Um, I, I'd love to see more responsiveness. Then you want to start with the question of, you know, what are your expectations in terms of responsiveness, and then how can you work together to close that gap, right? Um, Another thing is just making sure you're communicating and understanding one another. Uh, we, we had an encounter with a customer that, that escalated uh, pretty, pretty high to us. And, and the interesting fact is there was just a misunderstanding between uh, teams that was just a result of a, a language barrier. And so having a conversation uh, with the team, understanding um, the, the language differences and then communicating with one another to get those resolved. A lot of the, what, if you feel like you're not getting the most out of your support, can be handled just through communicating um, in a de-escalated manner and getting to a place of mutual understanding and then di direct, uh, establishing a path forward uh, where you can kind of close those gaps and get to alignment. And then, of course, um, SIOS is always here if you're using another support organization and finding that the support um, or the product that you're using is not up to your standards. Uh, our organization is 24 by 7 and has award-winning support uh, representatives available. Keshas, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about high availability, the importance of support, and then the importance of support for high availability, how teams can prepare themselves to get most of it. Thanks for all those great insights. And as usual, I would love to talk to you again soon. But let's make sure that there's not that much gap between our discussions. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. It was a pleasure being here.